Gattuso and Spalletti. Here's the Milan side, just to remind you. Four changes, Calabria and Rodriguez return at fullbacks. Bakayoko back for Villa in the centre of midfield and Jalanolu and Suso either side of Piontek. The last Milan player to score in their debut derby was Jeremy Menez five years ago. A lot of the smart money is on Piontek doing likewise. Will it be his night? Gattuso certainly hopes so. There'll be nerves, of course there will, but what a job this man has done. Rumours that he was gone just after Christmas. After a poor run of results, he somehow hung on, and that's exactly what Spalletti, who turned 60 a week ago, has to do now. Nerves everywhere. Piontek's brilliance will maybe shine on a glamour night in Serie A as we get underway. The other thing I should mention is there was talk that Marcelo Brozovic, who's such a key part of that inter midfield, was a doubt tonight. He has made it. I'm not sure how many believed he was truly a doubt. Spalletti always seemed quite confident. Early touch there for Jalanolu. Here's Bakayoko. Away from Galliadini. Now Asamoa. Oh, what a good start to the game. Intense pressure from both sides. There was a lovely ball played by Vecino. Into Politano, who couldn't quite get it under control. Both sides are going to press the ball high up the field. They got the ability to play around that pressure. Cleared by D'Ambrosio. This is Romagnoli. Milan full of confidence. Last defeat in Serie A was here against Fiorentina three days before Christmas. And their only defeat since was in the Super Cup. They travel to Sampdoria next week as they look to continue this run that they hope could even take them to second. Skriniar. An early touch for Politano. It's a bright start this from Inter. Here's D'Ambrosio. Politano just showing he can use both feet there. Bending that ball in with his right foot. He's very much a left-footed player. It's a decent cross. I just fouled there by Piontek. One of the key players this season for Inter has been Skriniar. Showed there exactly what he can do, making that interception, good defensive play, and then driving forward with the ball. Here's Vecino. Now Perisic, looking to float that cross into Martinez! And Vecino hammers it home! And Inter have the lead inside the opening three minutes of the derby! Spalletti wanted a performance, wanted a strong start, and he has got it! Well, it was started by Vecino. Pacatar doesn't want to defend in midfield. There's a good bit of play. Great cross into the box, Perisic. Header back into the danger area, and Vecino just continued his run. Still does well to keep it down enough to get it underneath the crossbar. Gets there before Romagnoli. Romagnoli should be getting back into that defensive area. That little bit quicker, but a good finish from Vecino. Martinez with the header. A selfless header from Martinez. A massive goal from Vecino and a game that traditionally starts so slowly fireworks in the first three minutes now time for Milan to respond what a start it's always also one of the reasons that Vecino is in the side he's good in the air when he makes runs into the box 
He's the most forward thinking of the midfield players for Inter. See him just playing in behind Martinez at the moment. Litano's dropping that little bit deeper down this near side. Flick just too strong for Rodriguez. And having praised Romagnoli. I'm not sure Franco Baresi would have been too impressed with that bit of defending. But no one's perfect. And once that ball goes beyond him, he's got to be racing back to get in the danger area. Can't think that somebody else is going to deal with it at the far post. And all the talk's been of Piontek, but defensively, Milan had only let in four goals in the previous ten Serie A rounds. So conceding like that is already a blow. There's Handanovic. Forward by Brozovic. Inter really in a rhythm early on. Politano. D'Ambrosio outside it. Just the wrong angle on the pass from Politano. That needs to be over the top of the fullback, Calabria. Oh, Perisic swept forward by Jalanolu. Piontek will chase as he always does. Here's the goal again. Lovely little turn. Ball played into the box. There's the header back. It's the right header. Don't think he can score himself, Martinez. What a cross that is. And he is really quickly onto it, Asino. It's him that started it off, and he's just finding a bit of space in midfield. And if Milan get good possession, Qatar could be the spare player. He has been picked up. D'Ambrosio. Qatar's 13th start in a row. There is a feeling that after a full season, Last year with Flamengo, he's starting to tire. They were never going to rest him for this. Had to play him last week when they didn't really want to because Jalanolu was so tired and he had to fill in. Here is Jalanolu. Turned behind by Danilo D'Ambrosio. Although he plays wide, Jalanolu likes to come in field and get onto his right foot, get shots away, play little one-twos with... Piontek will play Piontek in behind the defenders. Suso. Now Kessi just runs away from him. There's the all action midfield player, Kessi. So he's the best technical player on the field, but in terms of getting both sides of the job done, the attacking side, driving forward, getting back defensively, getting his tackles in. Can be temperamental as well. Pack it up. Let's fly, and Handanovic makes the save. Electrifying start here at San Siro. Musacchio. Sold uh, Calabria a bit short there. What a good strike that was from Pacata. Breaking forward. Getting shot away with that left foot. There's Asamoah. That was a heavy challenge, yeah. and it looked like it might have been an arm from Bakayoko, but certainly a clash. No, it's head on head. Nothing either of them do wrong there. That's just a nasty clash. Here's the strike from Pakatar. Left foot on the half volley. Starts to dip and swerve away from Handanovic. He gets both hands behind it, although he pushes it back into a dangerous area. I think that's a de decent save as the ball was dipping and swerving. Day when our thoughts are with uh, David Espina after his head injury in the Napoli game earlier. We don't like to see a clash of heads here either. 
Ambrosio. I think he was trying to suggest that Akiyoko had used his elbow, but that wasn't the case. It was a good, honest challenge between two players. Well, you can see Bakayoko sitting up. There he is again. Neither of them realise the other one's coming. They both want to win the ball. Painful one, isn't it? Full force at full pace. Take a look at the goal again. Well, it's usually Perisic at the far post heading it, but it was him that was providing the cross. Lovely little turn there. Just gets his foot underneath. It takes out Donnarumma with the cross. As does Martinez with the header. And Vecino had set the play up, just continues his run. Can't believe his luck. Still does well just to get it over it enough to get it underneath the crossbar. Great moment for him. And indeed for his under-pressure coach. If Spalletti could pull a win out of this game... We don't know whether he'd save his job, because we don't know if he'd go with a defeat, but what a triumph it would be. As you see Lucas Villier warming up there, he would be the replacement for Bakayoko. Gagliardini looks like he's going to be OK to continue. We'll wait and see about Bakayoko. And the reports were that he was going to play instead of Bakayoko. Bakayoko's rediscovered some of that form we saw at Monaco. Persuaded Chelsea to buy him. Well, he was given six games to save his Milan career because they were so unhappy with uh, various things with him and boy, did he respond. Back out there. Here's De Bright. Now Vecino, the goal scorer. Not a night for faint hearts. This grand old stadium as Pacata goes over. I think he's trying to make the most of it, Pacata. the player just about catches him but the scream and the double roll I think was justified 1-1 one, one is the most common result in the derbies in Serie A over the years it's the 170th in Serie A had that result 26 times not for five years I always love it when this fixture comes out because all of the newspapers do special sections and so on throughout the course of the week that have uh, more and more ridiculous statistics. Which, if you're commentary-minded, is uh, it's quite a lot of fun. Less so if you've got a life or something to do of an evening. Here's Bakayoko. Rodriguez Perisic he's had a really bright start to the game as well and he owes them a performance and he's still going here Perisic blocked from Romagnoli and now Vecino here the silence around much of San Siro Brozovic Allowed to run with that for a long way as Perisic. He won the ball back in midfield off Pakata. De Vrij was struggling to deal there with Piontek and Brozovic gets the first card of the game. Yeah, the referee didn't like the challenge. Spalletti not happy. Threw his arms up in the air. Can't believe that he's holding midfield player, an important player for them in terms of the defensive side of the game and getting on the ball, making things happen. It's not a bad challenge, but in the referee's view, worthy of a yellow card. Little step over, Cananolu. Brozovic was unhappy with one or two of the other players for not making the challenge that little bit earlier. He 
it was specifically aimed at D'Ambrosio, who he felt might have intervened. Jalanolu to take the free kick. Just wonder how heavily that Brozovic yellow card will weigh on Inter. It was a lot of defensive work. In from Jalanolu and headed by Perisic into the arms of Handanovic. He looks a motivated Perisic today. Brilliant cross, good turn to start with. Pitching the ball off Pakatar and starting that counter attack. Got a couple of balls in the air. And much controversy around the city this week about an interview given by an anonymous player from Inter explaining the whole Icardi mess. Talking about factions at the club. Spalletti is to blame, whether you believe it or not is something else, here goes Vecino what a game he's having in the early stages away by Kessie and he's been allowed to have a good game because nobody's picking him up he's just finding that bit of space, there again the ball was played into him, nobody around him Nolu was the player that eventually tried to track him back from this near side, he had a lot of ground to cover he's still in space here, Vecino just couldn't get the ball to him on that occasion Gagliardini Asamoah. That was confident from Handanovic. Piontek closing in. I'm sure his coach would have enjoyed it too much. Ambrosio. Spalletti yet to lose at Milan Derby. His team has started this one particularly well. Ambrosio again for Vecino. Well defended that time by Romagnoli. That's good coaching and understanding of the game by Spalletti. Good turn here by D'Ambrosio. Can he tee it up? He nearly could, and then the header from Vecino is cleared away. Now Galliardini. Oh, and he got the pass wrong for D'Ambrosio, but Inter are flying at the moment. I was just about to say, it's good coaching. I'm reading of the game by Spalletti. D'Ambrosio getting in here, just plays it into a dangerous area. Lovely the player that gets it away, but the use of Vecino, where he's playing him. He realises that Pakatar is the left-hand side of that land midfield three. He's not going to do too much tracking back. Bakayoko wants to press the ball a little bit higher. Casino's just finding lots of space. And arriving in the box at the right time as well. Seven of the last eight Serie A goals in this fixture have been scored in the second half. Could already have had two or three, and we've had one in this uh, fascinating opening 17 and a half minutes. Jalanolu, what were you saying about all those stats? I was amazed that after suggesting I didn't have a life and teed up the open goal that you uh, resisted, but it took a while. Always knew your reaction time would slow, Stuart. Sakio. The one player that we have barely mentioned so far was the one who has taken up much of the newsprint in the build up, Piontek. His team on the back foot. Get to think of a worthwhile touch from Piontek. So I've seen too much of Labria as an attacking force. He loves to get forward from that right back position, but Perisic is doing a good job so far. Suso pulled over by Gagliardini <laughs> and 
there's Musacchio for Piontek. Deep for Paqueta. He had a good look at it and he jumped well. And it's more than half a chance for Paqueta. Well, he does really well just to get a header in at all here up against D'Ambrosio. Doesn't jump early enough. Once he gets there, he just turns his body at the last minute. If he stays head on, he heads it back for the other post. He's got every chance of scoring. You see he gets on the half turn there, comes off the side of his head. It's a really good leap. Really expecting to win the ball at the far post against D'Ambrosio. I'm sure Pakatar is known for his heading ability. Yeah, it's not something we've seen much of. What a good addition he has been. He's been overshadowed in many ways by Piontek. But the two of them arriving when they did has given Milan an extraordinary boost. As right on cue, Paqueta gives it away. Here's Vecino. Slide in there from Paqueta. Brozovic now. It's the noise of the Milan fans trying to get behind their side. Forza Milan. Cleared by Musacchio. Poor touch from Jalanolu. Now Politano. Politano's chance to hit one and straight at Donnarumma. Good play, Politano. That little one two with Vecino again, who found that bit of space. Either side of the goalkeeper could have caused him a problem or two. Play the start of the season off in that right midfield role, right wing role. Tano more likely to take that place this time of the year. Calabria looking for Kessie. It's a simpler pass than he made it look. There's Asamoah. Now Perisic. Here's Vecino, who's been the player of the game so far. Now Politano up against Rodriguez. They always feel there's a pass on here into Perisic. Switching it from one side of the field to the other. It's the role of Brozovic. Oh, giving the ball away fairly simply there. There's a little one-two. Politano with the strike. Bounces nicely into the arms of Donnarumma. Inter out of form. 11 points from eight Serie A games in 2019. But three here would mean more than anything else. There for Martinez to chase. Played more in 2019 than any other Inter player. Of the Akadi uh, falling out has led to that. Let's pack it up. Rosio with a little tug of the shirt. Well, he's claiming he was elbowed in the face, but the first foul was by D'Ambrosio. As he comes hold of the shirt here, that's usually a yellow card. He tries to get himself away from the action by holding his face. And I think Guida just said to uh, Paqueta, listen, don't try and get him booked, it's my decision. Get on with it. For Bakayoko, for Jalanolu! 
sweet, sweet strike out of nowhere, and Handanovic does well to save. He does, because at one point it looks like he was going the other way and then just reacted in time. Just watch his dive there. He was going one way, his weight is going to his right, and right at the last minute he gets the dive in. Good strike. Shenanolu. It was the definition of a strong hand. He got it down late, the left hand, and did so well. It just seemed a late reaction from him, though, didn't it, Handanovic? Kessie. Jananolu suddenly full of confidence. Here's Calabria. Again, a disappointing ball from Suso. You can sense the fans already frustrated with him as they have been for this latter part of the season. Yeah, I'm not happy with Calabria going back there. He could have played the ball forward. Second, oh, he's playing like a sweeper there. 15, 20 yards deeper. Yoko. Now Calabria is starting to become more influential down that right hand side. Jalanolu. Done well to maneuver it and then he ran out of room. A good run by Rodriguez. Just about. Nolu 1v1 for two or three seconds there, didn't make the most of the situation. Put it onto his right foot, realised he couldn't get a shot across away, dragged it back onto his left. Good 1v1 defending. D'Ambrosio. Here's Skriniar. Yoko's got a slight problem here because he's the central midfield player for Milan. And at times he's been pushing on to this man, Brozovic. That time Kessie did it, but when he does push on to Brozovic, it leaves space for Fasino in behind him. So he's not quite sure whether to go or stay. And they're going to have to solve it. Here's screening up. Quadro Asamoa. There's just a bounce and a spring and an intent about Inter that hasn't been there this calendar year. Great to see Asamoa playing regular football again. Magnificent for two or three years at Juventus. There's wing backs in world football at the time. A bad injury. across to deal with Martinez for the time being anyway. Inter with players available. Cleared behind though by a retreating Musacchio. Well, Perisic wanted the ball played a fraction earlier. He's explaining to Martinez. He had players racing into the box, there was an overload there in Inter's favour. Skriniar, the fry, all good in the air. Perisic likewise. Rosio could be a threat as well. They often try and go to him. Second goal would be beyond their wildest dreams, and Donnarumma got just enough on it. Just before D'Ambrosio again, he was the target. Galliadini. No, 
Now D'Ambrosio. One back by Galliadini and Suso is not having a good derby at the moment. Here's Vecino. Is there a way through here for Politano? Cleverly done for D'Ambrosio to drive it across. He'll get a second chance. Milan under real pressure here, unexpected pressure. Now Perisic to roll it in! It's another big chance for Vecino. Well, they're playing really well, Inter. Perisic does well, he stays onside. He knows all he's got to do is try and whip it into that dangerous area. He's got three or four players in there. Big chance. He's got to keep over it. That's a chance he should take. Really good play by Politano and D'Ambrosio. They're doing well down this right-hand side. Perisic is doing well down the left-hand side. Pacino is finding space. It's not going Milan's way at the moment. They've been totally outplayed. And I don't think anyone expected this. Of course you should. As anything can happen in this uh, glorious historic fixture, but most people thought win for Milan, even uh, even heavy one potentially. Not so. Wouldn't be exaggerating to say Inter could have a three-goal advantage at this point. Certainly two. Here's Kessie. Now back at Yoko. It's much better this, Shalanolu, and he picks up the rebound. Well, that's a foul as well, and it's going to be a yellow card for Rodriguez, I would imagine. Now yeah, the card was straight out of the pocket. Well, he doesn't play the ball. Spalletti reminding the referee that he booked one of his players a little bit earlier in exactly the same position, exactly the same sort of tackle. Rodriguez gets the yellow card, quite rightly. One apiece. In terms of yellows. The crowd almost got that yellow card for Rodriguez because the miscontrol, desperate for him to win it back. Use an ours. Try and get the tackle in. The crowd plus uh, Luciano Spalletti. It's overly helpful to happen right in front of him. Here's Musacchio. Now Rodriguez, they haven't looked this tentative for a long time in Serie A. One player that does look on form when he's had the ball has been Bakayoko. He's the one that's turned away from a couple of situations and tried to make forward runs. He looks to be on top of his game. He's well, defensively, he's got a problem. He's just been outnumbered in there. Also, I can't remember the last time I thought that Milan's liveliest attacking threat was Jalanolu. And that's been the case so far. Here he is again. Now Suso. Kessie. And they moved it for a while with a bit more purpose, but then gave it away again. It's been the story of the half. Wins the ball there off Pacata. Ambrosio, then he gets clipped. He's going down before he actually gets clipped, but he does get clipped. Reports in the press this week that Jose Mourinho could be back at Inter for next season.
Spalletti under massive pressure, much of it justifiable. As much as any pressure in, uh, in football is justifiable, but they have not lived up to what we thought they would be. And it goes from Perisic. Now Jalanolu. He looks as though he's playing infield and Pakatars comes to the left-hand side. Slight change from Gattuso. Now they might swap over again. Frustration in this first 34 minutes. Gattuso side hasn't, hasn't really got going so far. Been outplayed by a very good Inter. He won 16 of 30 against Inter as a player. Just the one red card, which is a slight surprise. He actually might have been banned for this, but after being sent off at Chievo, he avoided the ban largely because Riccardo Meggiarini, the Chievo player with whom he had an argument, actually spoke to the referee about Gattuso's role in it. But did the decent thing, as it were. Ambrosio. Is that some more? Trod inside from Perisic for Galliadini. Way by Bakayoko. <laughs> Referee content that Skriniar got the ball. He's really had a look at, has he, Piontek so far? He's had chances to get the ball under control when it's been rolled into. Well, that time it was a bit firmer, but he's really got hold of it. was talking this week about how much he uh, loves Piontek's movement, how easy it makes it as a centre-half. If you need an out-ball, there are always multiple options, all of them provided by the same player. Who's holding who? Bit of both, really. Just we deciding that Fiontek was using the elbow or the arm and backing in. Much the annoyance of that man there. But Brian Scrini have played well so far. Send it back partnership. One back this time by Piontek. A misstep from Inter. Here goes back a Yoko. Now Suso. In towards Piontek. Back a Yoko missed the chance to play it when he might have done. Rozovic, the player that was caught on the ball. There's the handball. And Anolu. Certainly good cross that was played into the box by Sousa. It was slightly behind Piontek. Lost out. Romagnoli penalised. You can see what he thinks of that. He said he got the ball. Well, he didn't get the ball. Now Bessino, the free man again on the charge. This time Romagnoli got enough of the ball, according to the referee. The 
push in the back there on Martinez. The upshot is a free kick. Kessie, the player that committed the foul. Yeah, they just shows Martinez in the back. That probably should be a yellow card. But he's attacking the penalty area. Wants to get his shot away. The argument continues and continues. Brozovic still smarting over his yellow. And whatever the rights and wrongs, I know it's the derby, but you don't need to keep debating it for a minute and a half. Look at the side of San Siro. Packed to the rafters. The third against fourth. Rozovic and Politano stand over it. Rozovic flighted towards Perisic. The old Inter move in many ways, looking for Perisic at the far post. A little predictable. Yeah, but well defended. Romagnoli. That's all he could really do. The ball was played in behind him. Well delivered, and Skriniar heads it wide. Huge chance to make it two, and yeah. another chance goes begging. She asked beyond him. Can't get right behind it, actually, when you see it from that angle, I think he should do better. He finds himself with a bit of space, I guess he gets underneath it, it's a good jump. And again, it just slides off his forehead, that's a big chance, and he knows it. Such a danger in the air. Now Vecino and him have missed glorious chances. Almost hit the target and you score chances. On well, first view, it looked as though the ball might just be a bit too high for him, and that's why he couldn't get it on target. When you see the replay, it's a big, big chance. Forward by Paketai, you always wonder in these tight games, will those moments come back to bite them? De Vrij. He scored the goal after three minutes, Messino. And still, Milan haven't found a way of stopping him finding space in behind their midfield. Just wonder if Gattuso will make a tactical or personnel change at half time because it feels like he needs to change something. Well, he's been outnumbered in that central midfield area. Pacatar doesn't really want to go in there. He's been drifting out to the left-hand side. Shenanolu wants to be a forward player, either coming wide left or just going to support Fiontek. Just leaving Kessie and Bakayoko exposed in that midfield area. Inter not look comfortable when they've tried to play out from the back tonight. Have nearly gone wrong on a couple of occasions. Here's Vecino. But Martinez ahead of it. Still going though, Vecino. Well, I'd imagine one or two of the players, Romagnoli there, who went to close Vecino down, looking at the coach, saying, How can he have this much space? Are we going to try and pick him up? Are the midfield players going to do some work to close him down? How are we going to change things to stop Vecino running the game? Just wonder if they need Bilia as well as what's already there. Maybe because he's been so ineffective, Suso could be the one to make way and change things around a bit, but feels like they're a body short. When you look at the assist, Suso's got so many assists over the last couple of years. In from Jalanolu, now Paketa. 
looking for Piontek. Rodriguez. Tangled up. Doesn't agree with the decision. A bit unfortunate, Bessino, isn't he? No drama at the end of the half. There would be no justice. In terms of the way the game has gone, if Milan were to equalise now. Ronaldo loves to bend these ones in, almost tries to score himself. Maybe one or two players run across the line of the goalkeeper. Have to get the timing right so they don't run offside. It will be Jalanolu. Already played 30 seconds of added on time. Whip towards that near post, came off an inter boot. I think it was Perisic and behind for a corner. Well, that's what he's looking to do, score himself here. And the loop, really good free kick. It's lifted the crowd as well now. Suso to take this one. Perisic again wins the header. Look at Skriniar fired up. He does that job really well, Perisic, in the near post space. He's good in the air. Can Suso find his range this time? No, he can't. Guess that, who won the header again? Yeah, that man again. Perisic attacks the ball. Gets there before Musacchio. An excellent half from Inter, started by that early goal. Tactically, they've been the better side. Well played, Spalletti. It's also been a, an excellent half for us neutrals. Hasn't gone the way we expected. Inter should be further in front, but at half-time, they lead by that early goal. Spalletti has got it absolutely right to this point. But just at the back of his mind, that niggling worry about those missed chances and the sense that it could be so much more at this point for Inter. Well, we've been unsuccessfully playing substitute bingo. Samu Castellejo does come on. It is Paqueta who makes way. The game too far for the 21-year-old in the end. So it's Piontek who gets us back underway. Milan trail by... A goal to nil in their home derby. The last time Inter did the double over Milan in Serie A was seven seasons ago. Given what has gone on with them in recent months, how much they would treasure a victory here and treasure moving back up into third. Asamoah is going to play out on the left-hand side. He's going to play up front with Piontek. I'm not going to leave those two midfield players in there by themselves. Maybe that little bit deeper, Kessie playing alongside Bakayoko. Danilo is still going to be out on the left-hand side. by 
Romagnoli. I think he's also going to do a job on Brozovic to stop him getting on the ball and dictating the play. When they win it, he'll go and be a second centre forward. When they lose it, he'll drop off. And Mark Brozovic, who's been able to link up the play between the defenders and the mid other midfield players. Here's Baki Yoko. Jalanolu. Home fans want to see more purpose, more energy about the Rossoneri here. Because they're being dominated in the derby so far. Asamoah. Forward now for Perisic. Calabria sticking close to him. Good run from Perisic. Dragged the fullback short and then spun in behind him. And Samoa was aware of that and played a good ball over the top as well. Space now for Galliadini who decides to hit one and... Donnarumma just wonders where the protection was. Well, he hits this really well, starts to bend towards the goal. I'm not saying it's a good technical save, you should get both hands on this, straight at him. Takes a big risk by trying to push it away with one arm. If he gets the timing of that arm wrong, it just creeps into the far corner. Already his 134th Serie A appearance, still just 20 years of age. The fitness is on his side, he's going to break a lot of records. There are many very good goalkeepers who don't get anywhere near that figure in their career. They've just turned 20. They turned 20 in January. There's Suso. Forward now by Vecino. For Lautaro Martinez looking for a second into goal. And Musacchio stayed close enough to it. He was twisting one way, turning the other. Just couldn't get away from Musacchio right at the end of it. But that all started by Suso. And a ball across the field. Not a particularly good one. There's a technical issue there with uh, Signore Guida. But we're good to go. He could run out of spray. In from Politano. Double fist that time by Donnarumma. Perisic, it's another really good cross. Attacked by De Vrij at the far post and behind for a corner. That is magnificent win play from Perisic down this left hand side. There's the cross coming in. It's the recovering Rodriguez who gets the header in. Just about goes out of play. That's floated in and headed beautifully. They have their second goal from Stefan de Bruyne. Ecstasy for Inter. Well, they worked it really well. Last cross from Perisic caused problems. Then from the short corner. Get the in swinging cross, and they are a threat, those two centre halves. We saw Skriniar should have done better in the first half. They attack the ball, he gets away from Romagnoli, and he heads exactly where he should do back across the goalkeeper into that far corner. That's a great header. He was more determined than Romagnoli, he got stuck 
slightly away from the ball. Ecstasy for those fans. Look at Leonardo and Maldini. Wondering if there's a way out of this now for Milan, but let's remember Inter thoroughly deserve a two-goal lead. This is the uh, the minimum it could be. Here's Calabria. Good defending, Brozovic. He's got everything right so far, hasn't he, Spalletti? Not this season, but in this game. for Castillejo. Now Suso. Suso has shown great faith in him. And the touch from Rodriguez is nervous and awkward and ultimately awful. And here goes Politano. Politano, who was trying to reverse the ball back for the run of Martinez. I quite see that the pass was on. They couldn't have expected this, the way their team has been playing. To do this without Icardi makes a point to the rest of Serie A and makes a point two to Icardi. Turned up initially at games wearing those caps that seem to have coded messages on them. Well, this is them saying we don't need you. Another chance to drift the ball in there or whip it in with a bit of pace. Two centre halves are up again. Trying to pile on the misery here. Now it looked to me like Kessie headed that down onto his arm. We do have VAR. The way that's normally ruled in Italy is if it touches one part of your body before your arm, they don't normally give the penalty. It was uh, something the referees' association. Said two or three years ago, but Here we'll see. But he gets the header here, and he does head it onto his arms, but he's not getting any advantage from it. Piontek, ball still hasn't gone out of play, nor has the referee really had a chance to stop things, so we'll see. I'll be very surprised if, they, if the VAR gets it to have a look at this one. Castillejo, Calabria, he goes from Suso, he's never on there for Castillejo, it should have been but Piontek wasn't on the same wavelength and wasn't really looking for it either. Magnificent spell at Milan, but I think he's played poorly today so far. Piontek. Just the fact he hasn't been involved too much, but he hasn't been able to get hold of the ball. The time he's fouled by Skriniar. Yeah, crunching challenge from Skriniar. Who has let Piontek know he's there all night. Catrone's about to come on. Looks like we're not going to need the VAR. It's a foul by Scrivia. The yellow card was given to centre back. Trone can make things happen, he just hasn't done it for a while. 
he'll be on imminently. Whipped in by Jalanolu, terrific header! Bakayoko's first goal for Milan comes in the derby and gives them hope! What a great header this is from Bakayoko, I think he's had a decent game. Probably been Milan's best player. They defend this one quite deeply into... If you are going to defend that deeply, I've got nothing wrong with that. Then they have to have players in front of the back line to stop that ball being whipped in there. And it's short of them, he gets a really good contact with it. And certainly no chance for Handanovic. Those two players that were involved in that clash of heads earlier, they were the two players going up for it. And this time, Bakioko wins it against Gagliardini. A game of great headers so far. Rodriguez makes way for Catrone. A shift of system, and certainly a personnel within it from Gattuso. And that certainly changed the game now. Listen to the noise now from the nominal home supporters. The Rossoneri fans suddenly believe Kessie. Yeah, bizarrely, Kessie has gone to right back. Nadir has gone to left back. Here's the goal again. It's just short of those defenders, and they start going back towards their six-yard box. I think they should have a two-tiered defensive line there, so they can win the ball. If it's hit short, they can hit the win the ball, it's over the top. Pressure there is just about relieved by Handanovic. Is this the moment where Inter go to pieces? Is this the moment where chaos starts to reign again? There you can see Calabria at left back, you can see Kessie at right back. Put on your picture, he's going to try and link up with Suso down this near side. Milan have considerable self-belief. Looking for their sixth consecutive Serie A win with their best run for 13 years. They will not go down without a fight. Anolo has gone into centre midfield alongside Bakioko. change he was going to make whether the goal went in or not I think Gattuso Trone is going to go and play up alongside Piontek Stileo is going to play out on that left hand side now Kessie turned behind by Skriniar but the game is turning It maybe a little too quickly. Here's Jalanolu. Castellejo. Half an hour now in which it feels like anything could happen. Jalanolu. Now Suso. He's not going to beat Asamar, I don't think, for pace. Suso. Asamar was always going to get a good tackle by Asamar. Really good defending. Suso was trying to go down the outside. traditionally has enjoyed playing in derbies scored against Samp in the Derby della Lanterna 
Also scored two in three for Krakowia against Vizla. This one, not going his team's way, it's certainly not going his way. But he still has time to shine, here's back at Yoko. Didn't need to play it in the air, he could have rolled that into the box, but Bakayoko, I think, has been excellent. Great driving run, good pace from him. Just lost all his confidence when playing at Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea crowd got after him. Straight ball there for Vecino was so easy. Is Perisic. was racing into the box. Here's that cross from Bakayoko. Was there a foul by D'Ambrosio? No, there wasn't. But even those little moments can fire up the crowd and lift the atmosphere. The fact Piontek's complaining and showing fight and passion, it matters in these games. That, by the way, only Milan's third headed goal of the season. Not a bad time to score it. Jalanolu. Petrone was using an arm. Oh, he's claiming he didn't, but the ball was hit at him very firm. It wasn't a good pass into him here. Jalanolu. He uses his arm. Still only 21. Did score twice dramatically in the cup against Sampdoria back in January. As I said, uh, he was warming up at half time. No goal in Serie A since the start of December. It's had a difficult season so far, Catrone. Galliardini fouled by Bakayoko. Galliardini winning that battle. It's those two players that had that head collision. Quite rightly, the referee gives a foul there. Yoko just thought he could nick it away from Galliardini. Might have been a yellow as well, but it's been quite liberal, Guida. And it goes from Brozovic. Again, it's well delivered. Donnarumma, terrific save. Prevents the own goal. Now Katroni. I think the player that actually got the last touch may have been Piontek as he was going back in there. It would have been ironic. Around his box. Well-directed ball played in. Decent save from Donnarumma. Nolu with the clearance. Rather bounced off. Petroni. Perisic. Is that some more? D'Ambrosio. Now Politano. Inter are responding well, it's still Politano, goes over. Referee as well, and he's given the penalty. As he slipped and holds his lower back, Marco Guida points to the spot. I thought when the tackle was first made, he was outside the box. That was my first thought. As he goes here, no, he's inside the box, no question about that. The referee, well, that could have been a really nasty slip for him. He does leave his leg out. Castileo. I think it's a penalty. I think it's a good decision. Yes, he goes over rather easily, but there is contact. He does leave his leg dangling out. It's a yellow card, I think, for Romagnoli, who was moaning. He might have even pushed the referee as he was making his way towards the penalty area. Something almost surreal about the moment. Guida slipping as he pointed, 
added to the confusion. It was also one of those curious penalties when the player's going away from goal. And he does start to go over before the contact, but there is contact. And it's a silly challenge. From a recovering front player. Castillo. I don't think it's going to be overturned. He's still waiting. Still waiting, having the conversation. Lautaro Martinez waits as well. What a huge moment for him to try and throw off the shadow of Mauro Icardi. Can he put into 3 1 up? Donnarumma waits. Martinez! It's Inter's night at San Siro. And the two-goal advantage is restored, and it is bedlam amongst the away fans. Donnarumma, I think, wants to hold his ground, hoping that Martinez might go down the middle. There's the foul, it's inside the box, there's the referee. He could have hurt himself badly as he slipped over there. He stands till he hopes it goes down the middle, and then can't get the dive in, the ball's beyond him. Good, powerful penalty by Martinez. And so many penalties go down the middle. That's what Donnarumma was hoping for. And then he can't react quickly enough. There's the reaction. What a big moment for him to score. An important goal, albeit from the spot, in this game of all games. They're growing to love him. Milan have to respond again. Samu Castillejo came back off him, surely. Now Andrea Conti. It's going to come on. Will it be a straight swap for... Calabria. He's taking off Kessie, who's now in the right-back spot. Conti, I presume, will go to right-back. Player who's been uh, plagued and tormented by injury. He is ninth Serie A appearance for Milan. and Taking a while to get to that point, but what a talent he is. Real buccaneering right back. They're playing that card right now. There's almost a hint of desperation from Gattuso. It's already a derby that's going to be remembered for a long time for many different reasons, but will there be other twists and turns that would take it right to the top of the pantheon of most notable games between these two there's still time well, let's also give credit to the referee who made the decision it was proved right it was a big call as well here's Calabria they have not given up hope yet as it's whipped in towards Piontek and behind for a Milan corner. He's been excellent, Skriniar. And now from Suso! Brilliant save, but hammered in by Musacchio! He looked nervously at the assistant. But now, Milan pull it back again, Musacchio with a thumping drive. Well, what a cross this is from Suso. He's underhit many of them, but not on that occasion. It was the perfect delivery. Goal! And Musacchio with the easiest of chances right at the end of it. He's having a little look at the assistant referee, Yontek, standing in an offside. Which I don't think anybody touched it, but in the end, he wasn't interfering with play. This should stand, and we really have got a game on our hands again.
They wait nervously while the conversation develops. Here's the ball in. Was there a little flick there? I don't think there was. Certainly not by a Milan player. This is what they're looking at. Oh, it was a Milan player. It was Piontek interfering with play. That's what the referee and the VAR are going to ask themselves. Here's the flick there. Piontek's in an offside position. But is he interfering with play? He's behind D'Ambrosio. But you have to say he's slightly affecting what D'Ambrosio has to do. Yeah, does D'Ambrosio do what he does because of Piontek's presence? That's the question. Oh, going back to the halfway line. The referee still hasn't had anything. I thought he'd given the goal, but Borja Valero is coming on for Brozovic in the meantime. Makes sense with Brozovic potentially under pressure and on a yellow card. And he was, of course, an injury doubt before the game. Still talking. Yep, we get back underway. It was a curious moment. There was a lack of clear signal there. I think they might be slightly fortunate. The judgment of Piontek's position is quite a kind one. Well, he was offside. That's, you have to say, when the ball was headed on in that midfield or in the middle of the penalty box, the first flip, he's in an offside position, but it doesn't come to him. And the referee and the VAR are saying that he wasn't affecting what D'Ambrosio did at the far post, which was really to play it back into the danger area. Here's Castillejo, suddenly the wind in Milan sails again. Jalanolu. Here's Suso. Now Castillejo. Quick ball whipped in, but the experienced Andanovic out to claim. Good catch, Andanovic. Just takes off all the pressure. Doesn't try and punch it, just gets hold of it. Useful to have Borja Valero to bring on at this point as well for Spalletti. Romagnoli. And Brozovic had a very good first up, but as you said, he got booked. The game's a little bit too feisty for him. And it goes from Conti. And it's through for Piontek. Yoko. Petrone, he's just got to get hold of that. Just a little over eager. Now it's Vecino. Here's Perisic. Or Havalero. Whenever I look at Petrona, he's a hustler and a bustler. He'll try and work centre backs, he'll try and make good runs. Has he got the technical ability to match that work rate? I'm not sure he has, and that was a great example there. Terrific burst of pace there from Politano. And a heavy final ball as Inter start to look jittery. What a 
brilliant last 14 minutes plus any added on time we've got here. You can sense it was going to be a really good game right at the beginning when it was played at a high tempo, one or two chances made. Inter get their goal after only three minutes. And that the chances that have been missed as well, big chances. Castillo. There's Suso for Conti. Akiyoko tumbles under pressure from Galliadini. Yoko was going to say great recovery, but the referee saw it as a foul. Romagnoli's got to be careful. He was booked for descent when the penalty was given. It's a good tackle, isn't it? That's a good tackle. Should never have been a foul. Doesn't go through the back of Galliardini to win that ball. He goes down the side of him. Yep, it's one of those challenges that makes you think, well, if you can't do that, you really can't tackle anymore. Nothing wrong with it at all, not endangering anyone. Won the ball cleanly, but on we go with Conti, who just nicked that away from Vecino, who caught him late. And the referee has pointed at Vecino and made note of that. In the meantime, it's forward to Catrone. It's spilled, and it's Piontek. We bring it back to the other end and the challenge from Vecino. Here it is, Conti. It's overrun the wall. Oh, he goes up with his studs showing there. Vecino, he could be in trouble here. Offside was given. That's why we had to stop in play. Petrone almost made a very good run inside of Skrinia, but made it half a second too early. Yellow card for Vecino. Probably, probably the right decision. It was a strong yellow. Politano didn't see Bakayoko. Now Suso. Skriniar across. So dominant. And then winning the free kick. Well, that's silly from Suso. Skriniar had nowhere to go. He's won the race and he gets a yellow card. Not think for the foul, but for what he said to the referee. He's just got to make it difficult. As soon as he commits the foul, Inter are off the hook there. Skriniar just steps across him. Stays on his feet here. And gets nudged to the ground. A shirt tug as well from Sousa. And that's what gets him the yellow card. And whatever he's saying it goes along with it. Which I can't lip read. You can neither lip read nor speak Italian, so you're probably struggling. French is okay. There's Vecino caught as he tried to burst through. Conti that time as this remarkable game heads for its final ten minutes. Chance to whip this ball in. Said that on a few occasions. There have been some good deliveries into the box. Right, scoring with a good header. Skinner's had a couple of chances. Politano, the player, over the ball. The goal here would surely seal it. Nobody in that zone to defend the ball play. But there's a massive area for Politano to play this ball into between Donnarumma and that back line. There goes from Politano as it's touched away, and now Castillejo. He can run around, Borja Valero. Getting back is Galliadini. That's terrific chasing back from the central midfielder. Terrific play by both players. Jalanolu. Now Suso. He's got away there from Perisic for the first time. 
Now Conti with a chance to roll it in. Musacchio overhits it. Has been a game of unlikely goal scorers, apart from Martinez. You wouldn't have necessarily uh, picked out Vecino, De Vrij, Bakayoko, Musacchio. And that's been part of the intrigue and the fun of it. Well, they were being totally outplayed, weren't they? Milan, you have to give a bit of credit to Gattuso. He had to make changes, he made them quite early. He realised the game wasn't going his way. It has affected the game. And there'll definitely be controversy about the Musacchio goal and the many late-night Calcio debate shows as to whether Piontek was influencing the game. Did they judge that D'Ambrosio couldn't see him? In from Vecino. You could say that if Piontek wasn't in an offside position and where he was, D'Ambrosio might have just left it go out for a goal kick. It's been a risky strategy. Can driver. Someone who can run with the ball. Needs to open space in front of him. Quite the force he once was. Antonio Candreva, the last Inter player to score on his derby debut three years ago. He's on for Politano. It's a sensible change. Gives them legs down that right-hand side. Valetti really appreciated, I think, Politano's performance. He won that penalty. He'll be a bit of an inconsistent player, but he's been terrific tonight. Conti. See, that's again where Catrone's got to hold up the play, get behind it, make the defender make a tackle. Tries to flick it round the corner, and there's absolutely no chance for him to do so. He's a young player that's got to learn, and learn fairly quickly. You love his effort, you love his work rate. He's got to have the technical quality and the understanding to match it. Here's Galliadini. Now Perisic. First chance for Kandreva to run, now D'Ambrosio to roll it in. And well defended, Martinez was the target. Good play, D'Ambrosio, the right back, now he's out of position, Valero's trying to play it right back here. Saw him do that a little bit earlier when De Gea went past him. It didn't work out too well. Here's back Ioko. Now Conti. in by Suso. Now Calabria. That's Borja Valero on his backside. It was Candreva who recovered the situation. Deflected through. There's the touch from Piontek. Frustration for those Milan supporters. Who, with the cross, it takes the big deflection. He's just trying to use the outside of his right boot to flick it into that far corner. He's had some clever finishes since he's been at Milan. Not on that occasion. Yeah, but I think if you've watched his Milan career in full, you don't mind him trying that, as you say. His kind of finish. Galliadini. Game is really stretched now. Perisic. 
to seal things here for Inter potentially, but wonderfully well defended by Conti. He read exactly what Perisic was going to do there. Little step over, try and go down the outside. Spalletti upset. Sender-half has made a tackle from behind and given away a cheap free kick. Suso wanted to get on the ball there. Suso trying to get up the field. Hit high and wide. Get another cross into the box. It's going to cause problems. Conti. Suso on his weaker foot with the cross. Breaks down again for Milan. They're always going to be vulnerable to the counter. Conti's foul. Red card. Red card for Andrea Conti. Straight red. And that seems unfortunate. Well, Martinez, he does go in with his stud shot. It's not the leg with the stud showing that he catches Martinez with it's the trailing leg along the ground. I would say this is a yellow card. I'm not sure it's a red. He's desperate to win the ball back. I'm not sure there's great intent. You can see this in amongst all those dignitaries there. He can look at it again because it's a red card. They want him to. There's Javier Zanetti. And, uh, Suning representatives as well. But I think the VAR will say this is not a clear and obvious error. Conti, I don't think he's trying to do any damage. He tries to win the ball. He does, with that right leg, he doesn't catch Martinez. That's the thing that would save him. He's having a look at it. VAR has probably said to him, it wasn't quite as dangerous as you probably first thought. Well, it adds to the drama. Let's see what Marco Guida decides. It's the trading leg, you see, that catches in there. The studs aren't showing with that leg. Back he comes. No red card. He's going to give him a yellow. It's the right decision. And he's explaining to him why he changed his mind. And I must say, although it adds wonderfully to the drama and the spectacle and the picture and so on, we really need to get some clarification about these signals. Because it's not helpful to produce the red again and then wave your finger. <laughs> and then show the yellow. Well, I think Spalletti saw him get out the red card again. Exactly. Turned away, thought, that's it. They're down to ten men. Spalletti's going mad. Has he, oh, he's, Has he been he's sent been off? Sent off. he has. Off he goes. There's the challenge again. It's the trailing leg that catches Martinez. The right one was raised. The studs were showing, but I think that's the right decision. And I wonder if you didn't have VAR. I don't think the referee would have sent him off. It had given him the benefit of the doubt to start with. And that's how it works. He's been reprieved. Six minutes, not surprisingly, to be added on. That was the least that it could be with the VAR. And also the fairly lengthy check for that Milan goal as well. Here goes Conti. Back in Yoko. From a neutral's point of view, don't care how long this game goes on for. It's been magnificent at times. Deep from Suso. Deflected back across goal after Handanovic saved. And then away by Skriniar, so close to a Milan equaliser. What a ball from Suso. Castaneo gets round the back of D'Ambrosio. I think he's probably got to head it back down into the six-yard box so players can attack it. He tries to go for goal himself. It's a bit unlucky, Handanovic didn't know too much about it. 
When you think of the first goal that was scored by Inter when the ball went to the far post and Martinez heads it back down. That's maybe what Lejo should have done there. Frustration for Milan, Ranocchia, with whom the Inter fans are back in love, comes on for Vecino. I think you know my thoughts about Ranocchia and his qualities as a centre half. Uberese? No, I don't think, I think it's quite the opposite. Now Perisic is furious that he's been penalised, but all of this each time out of the clock. I think it's very difficult for a defender, no matter what sort of quality he's got, to come on in this sort of situation and defend really well. He's not up to the pace of the game, that should be a yellow card for Galliadini. Grab the right arm. Of Bakioko. Hope you're keeping count of all these bookings. Yep. Four for Milan. And three now for Inter. Depending on whether Skriniar was booked, we don't have official word about that. Here's Suso. Now Jalanolu, now it's given away. This has been some performance to produce from Inter. Well, they dominated the first, you have to say, 55 minutes, 60 minutes. They were the better side by quite some way. Had control of the game, they were finding space in midfield. Martinez was making good runs. Both fullbacks were getting forward. Catuso has made a game of it by making substitutions. The game has become more open and spread. Nodded forward by Bakayoko. Asamoah has stayed down. Here's Can Draver. Time for one of his typical charging runs. Now Perisic still going. Here is Can Draver. Way by Calabria. Running out of time now, Milan. Castillejo. What a mark he's made since coming on. And then he gives it away. And Petrone's foul. Kind of play by Asimov. First of all, he gets himself into a good position to make the interception. Slows down. He knows that Catrone's going to give him a nudge in the back. Just buys his team a bit of time here. The record hospitality sales ever at a Serie A game. 4,000 foreign fans here. What a spectacle it has been. They'll be selling double for the next one. It has been an old school nip and tuck, topsy turvy. Serie A classic, this. Now urging Sergio to get the ball forward. Header by Skriniar. Floated in towards Romagnoli, who'd stayed forward. Here's Suso. His cross turned away by Galliadini. Rolls just for a throw as we head into the final minute. Suso floats it in, and it falls at the far post! Turned behind by D'Ambrosio. What a block this is. D'Ambrosio puts his hands behind his back. Spreads himself. He could have just won this game for Inter. Catrone denied late on. This is it for Milan. And it's over hit. Of all things, the corner is over hit. 
and Inter start their celebrations. And during that six minutes, the referee indicated the players that he was going to stop his watch when there was a bit of time wasting going on. Here's the chance again. Petrone hits it really well, but what a block. D'Ambrosio at the far post, gets his hands out the way. A derby for the ages. A thriller at San Siro. Spalletti under pressure and his players have responded. And now the Inter fans can start their celebrations, their first double over Milan.